Hey everybody, it is Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. Today is Sunday and on Sunday we usually have a week in review. Today's going to be a little bit different. Um, it is sort of a week in review, but I've been talking for a little bit about uh, bringing you maybe some more of my background stories and I thought today would be a great day to do that. Um, hello in the chat. I am live and I am sitting outside, so hopefully the background noise isn't too much. We are I'm still in this apartment where, you know, we're in the process of moving and everything like that. So I thought this would be a great time to talk about um, turning points and that, you know, even, you know, good stress can still be <laughs> still stress. So I'll tackle that first and then I'll, I'll jump into the whole turning point thing. So, yeah, good stress is still stress. So as you guys know, maybe if you're, <laughs> you've been around for a little while that we are in the middle of a move. And it's a good, you know, the, the move is a good thing, you know, but it's still really, really stressful. Um, we are actually closing, and this is a good thing too, like we're closing on a house Friday, supposedly, crossing fingers. If you've ever bought a house before or not, I'm just going to say it's kind of um, up in the air. Like you always feel like, did I get all this stuff? Like you're, it, it's all rainy. It feels like whack-a-mole. As soon as I whack one down, another one pops up and like, just everybody just tell me what you need, right? So as soon as I get one thing done, it's like, okay, now this, and now this, and now this, and now this. It's so I keep calling all of the different people and places, and like, what else? Just tell me. I can do it all. Just let me know. So anyway, supposedly we're good to go. So that's a good stress. But then it's like, we can't just like go move in. Like, yay, it's done. Because, and this is also a good thing. My sister's having hip replacement. One of them it replaced tomorrow. So it's a good thing for her because she's been in a lot of pain. So, but I, it's stressful because I can't be there for her right away. But as soon as we close on the house, I'm going to be going to help take care of her and my nephew. So it's like, uh, I mean, it's, there's a lot of good things, but a lot of like hurry up and waits going on. And yeah, so that's, that's kind of where that is just, you know, even though there's, good things it still can create a lot of stress so jewel says you're moving once is stressful you're moving twice this is true right because we we're here in this apartment the reason we went ahead and well the kids and i were separated from randy for about two months we were back and forth just he was coming to houston we were coming here i mean just i mean constantly for two two and a half months before we just the kids and i were up here staying in the Apartment and then in, in I, I've mentioned again. I've mentioned this before the apartment is it's like we're just flopping You know, we're not and it's been so stressful like we don't have Like I wanted to buy a watermelon yesterday, but we didn't bring like knives and stuff with us because we didn't want to pack it in here and then pack it over there, so Yeah, so there's that I mean that that's the, the part where it's like stress is still stress even if it's good stress I got my shop turned back on and I feel really bad. I was so excited at first because like I got my first cha-ching because I got my Etsy shop turned back on. And then it turns out one of our friends that watches the channel, she bought a mystery box. And I thought I had planned for all possible eventualities as far as shipping goes. Well, turns out if you're trying to ship something to Gibraltar from the United States, it's not just because when I, when I, when I, plan out my shipping costs, I try to think of the farthest possible places like Shanghai, you know, Sydney, very far places, Moscow, St. Petersburg, um, to to generate the highest, you know, international shipping rate. And then we work down from there, or so I thought. Yeah. Um, so I feel horrible because I did the, the I went to look at the shipping for Gibraltar and I guess they must like put it on a, a rowboat and like have like the old man in the sea like rowboat it over to Gibraltar because it was going to be ninety dollars to ship it. And I was, I mean, I looked on all these different sites. I mean, I went to UPS. G, what's the other one called? DH something USPS. I mean, I went all over looking for a cheaper, and it was just like it, it was out of control. So I felt so bad because normally. If I'm off, I will, you know, say, look, I'll, I'll cover the difference, no big deal, right? Because that's what we do, you know, if we mess up on our shipping, we, we eat it. But it was going to cost more than the item and the shipping and everything combined. It was going to be like, 
forty dollars more than that. So I just had to message her and like, I'm so sorry, you know. We we got a couple options and I just yeah. So that was like, oh boy, I felt horrible. Okay, so let me let me pop in the chat real quick and then I'm gonna jump into the the whole turning points thing and and touch you about that. Um, so hey Joni, hello. Oh gosh, I'm gonna say it wrong. Danosia hair geek. I hope I said that right. Um, Joni says she's losing her hair because of stress. I hear that. Oh my gosh. Um, Diana said just had lumbar surgery 12 days ago. Oh my gosh. You just opened your your store back up. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the ring is, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, Pamela says just went through some similar circumstances. Promise it's going to get better. I can't wait. I mean, the kitchen we've got, like, you can't have two people in there. We were trying to, like, turn or just turn around. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, I want to cook again. So I just, it's hard to cook. Yeah. Hey, Stacey Scott. Hey, Delinda and Gina. Hi, Diana. And hello, hello. Oh, Dana. Okay, okay. <sighs> okay, so, and again, I get a lot of thumbs down on these videos. And honestly, I just have to say whatever because I, I wanted to do this because one, you know, you see people that have these really, now I don't necessarily let myself in there, but I, you see people that are being successful and you don't always see what goes behind that. Some, some of our friends share that, like Steve is really good. If you watch Steve Reakin, he, he's really good about sharing his backstory and letting you know, like, yeah, he's getting to be a really success. Well, he's really successful, but I mean, I foresee him being way more successful than he even is right now. But he's always been really open about his past and his struggles. And I think that's really important. And I don't always do that. I share some of, you know, I share that I used to teach and things like that. And I don't share a lot of other stuff. I think I've shared a few things like as far as my having panic attacks and things like that. But there's a lot of other stuff that would be beneficial I think one beneficial for me to be able to talk about it and for other people that are maybe in a, a spot where they feel like they're down and that there's no way out. So yeah, I, I, so I just wanted to share and I, and I changed, I put the title in my dropout story because not a whole lot of people know that I am a high school dropout and I actually kept it really quiet all while I was, while I was teaching. And yes, you can become a teacher and be a high school dropout because I am proof of that. <laughs> and not just like a, you know, a teacher's aide, but a full-fledged Texas certified, Texas board certified teacher and still have, you know, have dropped out of high school. So um, I'm trying to think where to start. I didn't really put a whole lot of, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into this. I was just like, you know what, I think it's important. Um, and and now it's it's something would I have changed? Would I change it? Okay, anyway, let me get to it. And I don't think there would be any changing it. That's the thing. Like, my life was in such chaos um, that the trajectory of it at that time was, I, I can't see it having hit any other path than it did. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I don't, and, and, and it's hard to describe things without making it sound like you're putting blame on somebody else because I'm totally not blaming anybody else. But there, are, there's always factors that lead up to things, right? And so as a child, my parents got divorced when I was, so I guess I was like 10 or so, my biological parents. And my biological father, you know, was toxic, a toxic person to have in my life. And he was in and out of my life for um, many years. So right around the time I was in junior high, he gave up parental rights on my elder brother and I, um, basically because he didn't want to be child support. So he gave up parental rights on us and was pretty much gone from our lives for quite a while. And maybe until I was 17 or 18. So, um, and there's a whole other backstory with him there, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, so th as a young girl, or I'm sure also a young boy, it, it really affects 
not having a, a strong father figure in your life can really affect you. And again, it's not his fault at all. And my mom remarried to my stepdad, who I call dad now, who's a grandfather to my children, who is amazing. Um, and so we couldn't have asked for better, but there's something about having a parent say, I'm done with you. Basically, I'm not your parent anymore and walking away. Um, that, that does a lot of damage, you know. Um, trying to think of how to, you know, and then, you know, just as a preteen and teenager, taking advantage of a lot of the situations that we were put in, we were given a lot of responsibility um, and trust. My mom, you know, had to, she was a working mom, you know, she worked, she was a librarian, so she worked at the college, and Michael, my stepdad, he worked shift work at the factories, you know, at the plant, you know, down in Pasadena, so a lot of times we might, we were, we were trusted with being home alone from, you know, school let out time until, you would think in just a couple hours you couldn't get into that much trouble. Well, I did my very best to get into as much trouble as I possibly could in that amount of time. Um, so, I don't know, I just, I, I did a lot of destructive things and I made it, I made it to my senior year. Sorry, the bells across the hallway are chiming. It's hard for me to focus. So I'm singing the song in my brain now to you. Um, so I, there's a lot of gaps there that I'm not filling in, you know, that you can probably guess uh, that you could probably fill in that, you know, what girls and boys do when they're unaccompanied and have too much time on their hands and no parental supervision, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of, yeah, bad choices that happened. Um, and when I was 17, I decided I was going to move out. And in the state of Texas, that was, you know, legally you were an adult and can move out when you're 17. So that's basically what happened. There were, there were, <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's just, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks in the chat. Yeah. I, I don't know why I just thought, I felt like it was important that you guys see, and I guess I should just fill in a couple of the blanks because part of what I wanted to say during this whole story is even as you are rebelling or even as you are, and this can happen as an adult, um, in a self-destructive place or just feel like you're in a really bad place, there is a lighthouse in your life and knowing who or who you know whom the people or person is in your life that is that solid on the shore lighthouse that is spinning in saying this is where the shore is when you're ready you know this is you know there's rocks here but this is where i am and during that time, and I know my mom doesn't always watch these, and she, she might or might not see this, so I'm feeling very teary-eyed right now. Look at this. Um, that, that she did what she had to do. She did not support my what I was doing or how I was behaving or anything like that. And looking back, I see that she was that lighthouse on the shore. Um, gosh. Ah! One second, it'll go away. Um, because, you know, when I said at 16, I was already saying, when I walk, well, when I turned 17, oh, this girl is out of here, you know, and she saw how self destructive I was. And so she, you know, packed me off to Utah to live in a, a place for girls that couldn't move out of home yet because the laws are different in Utah. So at the time, I thought I would never forgive her. I thought I I couldn't believe it, you know. So I, it was, it was, you know. Um, and then oh gosh, how long was I there? I was there for seven, eight. I was supposed to finish my senior year out there, but I convinced my mom that it was going to be okay. I could come home. I I got my stuff together, and so she brought me home after maybe seven or eight months. I can't remember exactly how long it was. Um, but then what did I do? I guess what? Um, I, I couldn't stand the rules very much longer and I turned around and I, and I moved out. 
So um, again, at the time I thought this was a horrible, you know, it was crushing. But now looking back, I see like that was her way of doing what she could do. She didn't know what else to do, right? Um, and again, my whole point in, in this, this story is, I, I think it's important for people to share that there's stuff that happens and that there's always a way out and that there's always a person in your life, hopefully, that you can, that is there for you and that even though it's tough love, you know, may be that there for you. So um, I did, I moved out and when I made that choice, um, she, you know, my mom's just like, my parents said, no, okay, well, you can go. We will not support you. You don't, you don't get a dime from us. You want to move out on your terms and everything, then you're on your own. So, so I did. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> it was terrible. I mean, I was a 17 year old girl, you know, I moved in with my best friend who had graduated the year before. And she tried her best to keep me in school. I know my mom probably doesn't know this, but she, you know, she tried her best to get me up and get me to school every morning, even though she'd already she'd already graduated, you know. And, and I kept it up for a little while, but then I just quit going to school. And unfortunately, there wasn't a person at school that ever said, "Where are you?" You know what I mean? There wasn't that teacher in my life there wasn't I mean even my freshman year in high school I was on the tennis team I was told I mean tennis practice for us was first thing in the morning first period I skipped I don't know how many times and the tennis coach never called my mom and said hey Margaret's not coming to school in the morning where is she you know like there wasn't a teacher and it sounds horrible I'm I know how teachers are I was a teacher so I know how it is but I'm just thinking nobody called I my students, when they were gone for two days, if they were out, the second day they weren't at school, my, the, the phone was in my hand right after I took attendance, you know, calling the parents. Even though it was elementary school, we were in a pretty rough area, so you just never knew, you know. So, yeah, it, 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 there was never anybody there. There was That, that, that element wasn't there in, in my school, you know, for me. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure I didn't make it easy either. But, oh, where did I leave off? So yeah, I moved out um, and it got, you know, it was horrible. It was pretty bad. And I moved back home after I quit going to school. Law, I quit going long enough that I couldn't graduate, basically. And my mom, again, was like, okay, you're coming home. These are the expectations. You know, one, we're taking you to get your GED. Uh, two, you're, if you're living in this house, you're either working in so many hours or you're in school and it doesn't matter that you just dropped out of high school you're going to start back at the junior college it's you know asap so technically i started college in may or june like right as soon as i would have graduated high school so it's not like i missed like a ton of time so as soon as i got back home my mom had that ged taken and me enrolled in the first summer session of college at the junior college like that. So it was horrible. <laughs> Just gotta say it was horrible, but it didn't matter. She was like, you are either in school or you are working if you're living under our roof. And if you're going to school, um, you have to be take, you know, you have to be taking so many hours or you have to be working, you know, like there has to be a balance of amount of time you are in school and amount of time you are, working very full i think she learned you must stay busy <laughs> you must be busy until you drop because that's who i who i who i still am right i still am just like have to be busy 100 percent until i yeah idle hands right at the devil's playthings is what they say so um yeah so basically that happened I, and i you know as a theater major for about three years and I decided that I was gonna move out again. Guess what happened? Mom said, okay, you wanna move out and live with your boyfriend? Go. I actually lived in Austin very briefly with the guy I was dating. Later became my first husband, but uh, 
Yeah, she was like, okay, you're not done with college. You're moving out. That's it from us. You know, you're on your own. And so I did. I went to I went to live with him, and then I went um, to live up in Denton because I thought, okay, I'm going to go live up with some of my girlfriends in Denton. And uh, honestly, it was one of the best and worst times of my life because I learned – very quickly the value of in education um and i know times are different now you know i know a lot of people are you know not placing as high of regard on a college education because of the cost but i learned pretty quickly that the only jobs i was qualified for was i worked at the diner and i worked at a a copy shop kind of like a kinko's it was called joe's copies and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but in order for me to make the rent and pay my bills in this little efficiency apartment that I had. I had no car. I had no, you know, I had to ride my bike everywhere. I had to work the graveyard shift and turn around and go ride my bike to the diner, work the breakfast shift at the diner. And that was six, seven days a week, depending on the job. And it was one of the hardest times of my life, you know, because I would see my friends who were going to UNT going out at night and wanting to go do fun stuff and I couldn't go. I couldn't do because I wasn't in school and that was my mom's, my parents, you know, condition. You, you want support from this family, you've got to be on the right trajectory. We're not going to support you to go have fun and live it up by yourself. So again, the whole point is like learning, you know, if you're in these, you know, if you your situation is going to be different than mine or whatever it is, but recognizing that, okay, that was a really tough time and it, it shaped who I am today and also showed me who, who were the rocks in my life, right? Who were the people that were there thick and thin and also what it looked like when there were people that were not those rocks in my life, you know, the people that were just, you know, <laughs> ships in the night that, we're there for the fun and then tough times are gone and yeah so it's I don't know it, it helped me now being able to identify people that are toxic in my life you know as part of that just going through all of that stuff so I ended up coming back to my parents and um, and changing my major to education and going to University of Clear Lake because after I went to the junior college I could transfer into the university so I went and just, you know, at that point, I'd had enough of it. <laughs> I'd moved out twice. I had lived the hard life. And luckily, I had that safety net, you know, where it is hard. If you know me, I'm very stubborn. And it's hard for me to admit defeat. And so for me to have to admit defeat and be able to go home. And at the time, you know, again, it's... I'm not really good at people telling me what to do. So, you know, and having left home and gone home a number of times because of all that, because of my choices, you know, and having to go back to like following the rules. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, but at the same time, my mom never threw it in my face. You know what I mean? I think that was really important. And and coming, you know, it would have probably broken me. If I'd had somebody in my life that threw it in my face or if we got into an argument, you know, threw it up to me and it was always like, oh, yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. You know, like she was really amazing about never, I should say what she still is, you know, never like holding it up to me and saying, look at what I did for you. You know what I mean? Like I know people who's unfortunately whose parents do that and just throw it at them all the time to make them feel bad. Or I don't know what the, what the, what other reasoning there would be, but you know, we've all had our downs and <laughs> dances are very merry, a very old millionaire. Right. Um, Oh my gosh. Stacy squats is the other summer semesters in college are the toughest. Is are way shorter? It was a horrible, my first, like, it was like sink or swim. My mom's like, I don't care. You're going in, you know? So, and I went in and 
my first semester, oh gosh, horrible. I did great after that, but I learned pretty quick. I, cause I, you know, I told you what I was like in high school. You can guess how much homework and like studying I did. So <laughs> it was different in college. Um, so again, I wanted to share this story with you guys because not that I think like I'm some big YouTuber or big, you know, whatever, but I think it's important that you know you know, you see the success that people have and know that it it's not always just easy breezy, easy sailing, you know, and then it, it takes work and stumbles and falls and knowing and, and people and community and, you know, so I don't know. I was going to ask you guys, I meant to ask it in the beginning to share in the comments a turning point in your life. You don't have to go into a big long saga like I told you, but I think every, like right now is a turning point in my life. This last year, end of last year, beginning of this year, has been a huge turning point in my life, not just because of the move. You know, I've had a lot of health stuff going on that I haven't shared with you guys. I've had a lot of marriage stuff going on that I don't really share, you know, but it's it's been a huge turning point as far as our family, our marriage, you know, our marriage is doing great, so don't get me wrong it's but we had a big we had a big turning point in our marriage you know just recently and I think recognizing that that it's happening recognizing those times when you're in them and being able to identify I don't know your 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 lighthouse I don't know how else to put it you know the the light on the shore your rock or whatever and and going there and having that person be there for you. Um, yeah, and learning from your mistakes. So learning, if I had worked all those jobs and done all this stuff and not learned a darn thing and that would have been sad <laughs> for me. But anyway, that was my story for today. I wanted to share with you guys. And again, I know these are not the most popular videos that I do, but I really felt like it was important. And I wanted to, to tell you guys that story so um, yeah let me know if you want you know about a turning point that was something in your life that it could be a good thing even too it turned out to be a good thing it was tough it was it was tough but it turned out to be a good thing okay um yeah that's that's tough Laura oh my gosh yeah I can't even imagine a girlfriend of mine her husband left her with three little ones and he was fooling around I won't mention names but um while she was pregnant with the third and then left her during the hurricane you know he had come back to help and then when he saw that the hurricane was about to hit he left her and the three little ones and their dog because he couldn't bear to be trapped in the house for who knows how many days because of the hurricane with his children and his wife and so she 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 was one that ended up getting boat rescued so she her three children all of them under six years old one was a baby and their dog had to get rescued by boat because they and, and he had left it was yeah so it just yeah <laughs> i mean we yeah so we've all we all have horrible I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Notice your turning points and learn from them, basically. <laughs> okay. I will um, talk to you guys soon. And I will, yeah, have a great day and everything, you guys. Leave me your message if you want about your turning point, And I will comment back to you. So, bye, you guys. Have a great day.